This is Shamila Mas here. Okay, welcome to the online classes for the subject of science and for the standard of seven and for the section of seven. Okay, so in the previous lesson we had learned that is from fiber to fabric. So in that mainly you learned about wool, cotton. That is the what we get from the animals as well as from the plant products. Okay, so when do we use the woolen clothes or from where? How do we make the woolen clothes? The woolen clothes are made from wool, and when it is being used, it is used during the winter season. And from where do we get the wool? We get it from the animals. And then next we use the cotton clothes. Okay, so the cotton clothes is a plant product. And from where do we get this? We get it from the cotton plant. And when it is being used, it is being used during the summer season. Okay. And why do we use during the winter season woolen clothes and during the summer season cotton clothes? What is the reason for it during winter season to maintain the heatness or the to keep our body warm? So we use the woolen clothes. So the woolen clothes give us warmth in our body. It doesn't allow the body to become cold. And during the summer season, why do we use the cotton clothes? Because during summer season, already the temperature outside is very hot. So to keep ourselves, that is to keep our body cool. So we use the cotton clothes, and especially we use the light colored clothes. Okay, so that is what I have mentioned here. See, woolen clothes. It is made from wool, and from where we get the wool? It is the animal fiber, and this is being used only during the winter season. And then next is the. So now you see the cotton clothes. The cotton clothes is got from cotton, and cotton is a plant fiber. Okay, and. It is used during the summer season. Okay, so mainly we use the two types of clothes. One is the woolen clothes for winter season, and one is the cotton clothes for summer season. Okay, now anything you want to know whether the substance is hot or cold. Okay, how do you find out? We have to find out by touching it. Okay, so only by touching it we will know whether the object, the material, or the things which is hot and which is cold. So how how we can differentiate between hot and cold? So it is only done by touching the material. See, some objects they may be hot. Now, for example, it can be coffee or tea. When it is poured in the tumblers, you touch the tumbler, you will know whether it is hot or cold. Okay, and then next, some objects are Cold, especially the ice cream. Okay, so the minute you buy the ice cream and hold it in your hand, you will feel the chillness of the ice cream. In the same way, when you get hurt, what do the first thing we do? We put the ice cubes. So, okay, so the minute you hold the ice cube in your hand, you will know that the ice cubes are cold. And then next, some objects will be hotter than the others. Okay, so some object will be just hot, and some objects will be more hot than the other objects. Okay, so the next is why some objects are colder than the others. Okay, so ice cream when you take it in your hand, it will be cold. The same thing when you take the ice cube in your hand, it will be very cold. Okay, and after some time, after you hold the ice cube in your hand for a few minutes. Okay, the ice cube becomes warm. How does it become warm? Because the heat from your body gets transferred into the ice cube. So the ice cube also becomes hot. That is, you can't feel it is hot. You can only make out that it starts to melt. So the minute it starts to melt, you can understand that the heat from your body is being transferred into the ice cubes. Okay, and then next. So we decide it by touching. Okay, so you have to make out whether the object or the item is cold or hot only by touching it. So for that, you have to refer activity 4.1. It 
this is page number 35 and 36. So take out your readers, open to page number 35 and 36 and you can refer that activity which is given there, that is the activity 4.1. And then sometimes, sometimes when you touch the objects, you are in a little confusion whether to put this as hot or whether to put this as warm or whether it is cold or whether it is very cold. Okay, so how can we make out this difference? Okay, so that difference can be made out by using an instrument. Okay, now for example, you get fever. Okay, when you get fever, what do you do? You go to the hospitals. Okay, so before going to the hospital, how do you make out that you have got fever? Because you feel yourself, your body is hot than the other days where it has been in the normal hotness. Okay, so every day the temper body warmth is changing. Okay, so the day you have fever, your body will be more hot than the other days. So then only you make out that you have got fever. So when you get fever, what do you do? You go to the hospitals. Or sometimes before you could go to the hospitals, you want to check your how much fever you have got. So to check this, okay, so to check how hot or cold a body is, we use the instrument called as thermometer. So this thermometer gives you the, that is the thermometer shows you how hot or how cold the body is. So the minute you use the thermometer, it shows you how much fever you are having and this thermometer. It is of two types. One is the clinical thermometer and one is the laboratory thermometer. And to check the fever of human beings, that is only for human beings, we use the clinical thermometer. So when you go to the hospitals, they use the clinical thermometer and this fever, it is measured in degrees and the term used for this is Sense, yes, okay. They say now, for example, you go to the hospital, you check your temperature, you have got 101. So they say 101 degree, okay. So they use that word 101 degree Celsius. So this is the term used to measure the temperature of a human person. So now we'll see how a clinical thermometer looks. Yes, children. Now we will see how a clinical thermometer looks. Okay. So, roughly I have drawn the diagram of the clinical thermometer. Okay. This, when you go to the hospitals, presently most of the hospitals, they don't use this. But still in some hospitals, they use this the type of thermometer. Okay. But nowadays, every day they use the digital thermometer. So, in the previous, that is in the olden days, when they were using this thermometer, this was called as a clinical thermometer. And this clinical thermometer it is made out of glass. Okay. So, as a glass is transparent. So, that is why it is made out of glass. This whole, the whole tube of it, it the whole glass is made, the tube is made out of glass. And on this glass tube, you can see like how you in the scale, in your scale you have got the measurements, okay. So like that over here also there is a measuring scale on top of the glass tube, okay. So this measurement only will tell you how hot or how cold your body is or how much temperature you are having, okay. And inside this glass tube, you have got a thin shining silver uh, liquid in it. Okay, so that shining liquid it is called as the mercury, and mercury is the only liquid metal available. Okay, so this mercury is being inside. It is being inside this clinical thermometer that is inside the glass tube and this mercury as it rises according to your temperature so where it stops that will be the temperature of your body and which helps the mercury to rise okay that is the 
bulb. So this is called as the bulb. Okay, so when you go to the hospitals, what they do? They take a clinical thermometer. It will be kept in a solution. Okay, it will be kept in a solution. So after they take out, they shake it like this. Okay, so why do they shake it? For the mercury level to come to the zero. Okay, for the mercury level to come to the zero. That is the starting point. Okay, it's not exactly zero. It is the starting point. The mercury level over here, the measuring scale starts only from 35 degrees. Okay, so till it comes to the starting point. Only then this portion. Okay, they keep it under the tongue of the person who is having fever. Okay, so they keep it under the tongue and you also might have seen when you go to the hospitals, when they keep the thermometer in your mouth, they say don't bite it. Just keep it under your tongue. Why they ask you not to bite it? There are two reasons. One, it is made out of glass. So if you bite it, it will break. So if it breaks, what happens? The liquid, the mercury, the liquid mercury will come out. Okay. So this is not good for our body. It is a poisonous one. So this material, this mercury should not enter your body. So that is why they tell you in the hospitals, don't bite it, keep it under your tongue. Okay. So the two reasons, one it is made out of glass and one if it breaks, the mercury will come out. Okay. So after they shake it and bring it to the starting point, they keep this bulb into your mouth under the tongue. So the heat of your body, how much heat is there? With that uh, temperature, the mercury level will start to rise. So where it stops, okay, that will be your temperature. So after they remove it from your mouth, for one minute it is being kept in your mouth. So within one minute the mercury level will rise and show how much fever or how much temperature the person is having. So after they remove it out from your mouth, they take and keep it on the top and they see because they need to see the mercury level. Only that thin line what it has been moving where it has stopped. So that they will check and they will tell you what is your temperature. But nowadays we are having a lot of digital thermometers where you need not keep it in your mouth. Okay. You can keep it even in your armpits. Okay. And that uh, thermometer, the digital thermometer, okay, it need not be shaken. Okay. Because that one, if there is a stopping point for clinical thermometer, that is for this type of thermometer, there is a stopping point. But in the digital thermometer, the mercury is not there. So we need not shake it, nor we need not worry whether the mercury will come out. Only by the readings, it will, with the help of this bulb, it will give you the temperature. So we saw about the clinical thermometer. Okay, so now we are going to see about the next type of thermometer that is the laboratory thermometer. Okay, so what is this laboratory thermometer used? So clinical thermometer is used only to measure the temperature of the human being. So apart from human beings, clinical thermometer is not used to measure any other temperature because that thermometer capacity will measure only, will be perfect to measure only the temperature of human beings. Okay, so over here this clinical thermometer, it is, this the laboratory thermometer is just like the clinical thermometer, only thing the size will differ. Okay, clinical thermometer is small, laboratory thermometer is very big. The shape, the size, the process, everything is just the same, but only the shape, the size will change. Okay, but otherwise the thermometer will just look the same. Okay, so this laboratory thermometer, it is used to measure the temperature of other objects. So apart from human beings, if you want to measure the temperature of any other object, 
Now, for example, if you take a tumbler of boiling water and keep the laboratory temperature in it, it will show you how hot the water is. Okay, so for that purpose only we use the clinical thermometer. And then next, it is bigger than clinical thermometer. Okay, the clinical thermometer is of medium size because it has to be kept under the tongue of a person. But clinical thermometer is much more bigger than that. Okay, the laboratory temperature is much bigger than the clinical thermometer. And over here, the range starts from 10 degrees. In the clinical thermometer, it used to start from 35 degrees, but here it starts from 10 degrees. So, to know about it more clearly, in your textbook, refer to figure 4.2 and 4.4. Okay, both the figures you refer so that you know which is the clinical thermometer and which is the laboratory thermometer. Okay, and then next, over here in the laboratory thermometer, once the temperature is being checked of the objects, as soon as you remove the thermometer, immediately the mercury level will come to the starting point. So, as I told you, if you take a tumbler of boiling water and keep the laboratory thermometer inside it, immediately the mercury level will rise and show you how hot the water is. Once you remove the thermometer from the hot water, immediately the mercury will come down to the starting point. But the same, it is not there in clinical thermometer. Clinical thermometer, the mercury will remain where, the, where it has stopped showing the reading of your temperature. So, why does this not happen in clinical thermometer? Because in the clinical thermometer, there is a stopper. And that stopper, it is called as the kink, okay? See, the mercury level does not fall in clinical thermometer. Why it doesn't fall? It remains there only till you shake it. It will not come down. The mercury level will not come down in the clinical thermometer. What is the reason? Because there is a stopper, okay? At the end of the bulb, there is a stopper. So, that stopper is called as the King. And this stopper, that is the king, it is not present in the laboratory thermometer. That is why the mercury comes down immediately to the starting point. And here the mercury remains in the place where it shows the temperature. Unless you shake it, it will not come down. So for this, you have to refer to figure 4.5. And in your textbook, open to activity 4.4 and 4.5. Five and read the activities so that you will understand what is the difference between the clinical thermometer and the laboratory thermometer. Okay, so in the next session, we will do about how the heat is being transferred from one object to the other object. Thank you.